This is the last set of identities uh, for, actually, for the year. Um, and remember that you don't have to memorize these. We will be providing them for you on the test. Um, these are the ugliest identities to use, um, and we'll have the least practice with them. So you're also not going to have very many of these on the test as well. Um, so we're only going to cover three types, and before we can do those types, we need to discuss some differences in these identities. Um, the first is that I want you guys to notice this plus or minus symbol in front of three of the identities. Normally, plus or minus means do both, it means look for the positive answer and the negative answer, but in this um, particular set of identities, plus or minus means you have to figure out which one. So let's say that I was looking um, for cosine of 15 degrees. Okay? Well, first of all, that would be cosine of half of 30. So we've done 15 degrees. Um, with a summer difference identity, we can also use a half angle identity now. I would always choose summer difference, but that's just personal choice. But the more important thing is that 15 degrees is in quadrant one. And so if I was trying to evaluate cosine of a half angle, and that half angle it was in quadrant one, I would choose the positive square root. And so that plus or minus is always based on the location of the half angle. So of half A. So for example, um, let's say, let's erase this example down here. Okay. Let's say that I wanted to evaluate um, cosine of 157.5 degrees. Okay. Let's say that I wanted to evaluate um, cosine of 157.5 degrees. Okay. So 157.5 degrees is half of 315 degrees. So here's where peop the first mistake that can occur that people make. The first mistake is that people want to use this angle to determine the plus or minus in front of the identity that we're going to choose. Okay, but in this case they would get it the sign wrong because 315 degrees is in quadrant 4 where cosine is positive, but it's not based on where angle A is. It's based on where half of angle A is. We are trying to evaluate 157.5 degrees. We are not trying to evaluate 315 degrees. And so we base our sign out here on where are, is the angle we are trying to evaluate cosine for. And since we're trying to evaluate cosine at 157.5 degrees, which is in quadrant 2, and cosine's negative in quadrant 2, that means we would choose the negative in front of that sign. At that point, I'm done using the half angle. The only thing the half angle allows me to do is to determine the sign of my trig value. And then I figure out what angle is this half of. At that point, I'm using this angle, angle A, throughout the rest of the identity. Okay, and we're going to practice one that's a unit circle angle that's been chopped in half as our last problem on today's notes. The other thing I want to comment on before we start these examples, and I know I don't want this to take too long, is I want you to notice that tangent has three different identities to choose from. It's got this one, this one, and this one. They're all equivalent to each other. I would strongly urge you to completely stay away from this one. Okay, and there's a wide variety. First of all, you would have to deal with the plus or minus. Second, you have an enormous radical. Third, inside that enormous radical, you have two terms in the denominator. 
and fractions are always harder when there's more terms in the denominator. So then we have to compare the other two. They're both fractions without <clears throat> radicals and without a plus or minus, so you don't have to worry, no worries about the plus or minus on these two identities. You don't have to choose, they will take care of themselves. But one of them is still better than the other one, and that's this one. This one is the best. It's the one we try to use the most because it is a fraction, but it only has a single term in the denominator. This is your second best because it doesn't have the radical of the plus or minus, but it does have two terms in the denominator, which makes the denominator harder. And as I said, fractions are always harder when the denominator is harder, when it has more terms. Okay, And we're going to practice using all of these. So the first problem is, of course, our picture drawing problem. So I've been told that angle A is in between 0 and pi halves. So that means it's quadrant 1. And I was told that the sine of angle alpha, angle A, was 4 fifths. So the opposite side was 4, and the hypotenuse was 5, and that makes my adjacent side 3. And now I can evaluate all my trig values. So I want to do sine of half of my angle. Okay, so just because it's good practice and because I don't want to flip back and forth through the screens, I'm going to write down the whole identity. Let's go ahead and use the same symbol. Over 2. I don't like how messy that is. Okay, so there's the whole identity. And now I have to choose which sign it's going to be. And so if angle A is in between 0 and 90, then half of A is going to be in between 0 and 45. And that still puts it in quadrant 1. And so that means I'm going to choose the positive sign. Okay. Now at that point, remember, I'm now done with my half angle. Everything else that I do is with the actual angle before it got chopped in half. So the angle that I drew the picture for. So I'm going to do the big square root. You notice that the plus or minus is gone because I already chose the positive. And then I put 1 minus. And then I do cosine of A from the picture. And cosine is 3 fifths all over 2. And then all I have to do now is I have to simplify it. So 1 minus 3 fifths up on top is 2 fifths. And it's being divided by 2. So some of you will, will have no problem doing that division. Remember that you can always rewrite this dividing by 2 as multiplying by a half. But 2 fifths divided by 2 is 1 fifth. And now I can take the square root of that 1 fifth. And I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 5, which of course you couldn't leave like that. So you would end up with a final answer of square root of 5 over 5. Okay, now I want to do the next one. I'm also being asked to evaluate cosine of half of a. So cosine of half of a. And we already figured out that half of a is in quadrant 1, so when I write down this identity, 1 plus cosine of a over 2. I already know it's going to be the positive. And what I notice is that the only thing that changes in this identity is that this minus sign right here just became a plus sign right there. That's it. Otherwise even all the numbers are going to be the same. So I'm just going to have the 1 still, but instead of minus 3 fifths I'm going to have plus 3 fifths. Still all over 2. And so this time around, what I get as I'm simplifying through this is instead of getting 2 fifths on top, I get 8 fifths on top. Because this is right here, this 1 is 5 fifths plus 3 fifths. Okay, still all over 2. And so remember that 8 fifths divided by 2 is the same thing as 8 fifths if you need to, times 1 half. So I'm still going to chop it in half. 
and so I get 4 fifths, and then I square root both parts, and the square root of 4 is 2, still over the square root of 5, which of course I still have to rationalize, and I get 2 square root of 5 over 5. Okay. Now, the last one we're being asked to evaluate is tangent of the half angle. So I'm going to show you two ways to do it, um, and that's just because the second way is only going to work because I've already calculated sine of the half angle and cosine of the half angle. So we're just going to use it to check our answer. Okay, so tangent of the half angle Um, remember our first choice of identity. We're going to do 1 minus cosine of the angle over sine of the angle because that is the simplest of the three inversions. Okay, and remember we don't have to worry about plus or minus. It's going to take care of itself. So 1 minus cosine of alpha is 3 fifths and sine was 4 fifths. So we simplify that. 1 minus 3 fifths on top is 2 fifths. And then instead of dividing by 4 fifths, we multiply by 5 fourths. And the 5's cancel, and 2 over 4 is 1 half. So that's what tangent would be if we could chop angle alpha in half. Okay. Now, we can check our answer because tangent of your half angle is the same thing as sine of your half angle over cosine of your half angle. Just like any other tangent is, you know, sine of whatever over cosine of whatever. And I've already gotten those two numbers. I've already calculated those. Sine of my half angle was square root of 5 over 5 and cosine of my half angle was 2 square root of 5 over 5. And so I can simply check my answer, or I'm showing you another way you could calculate it if possible. So I have square root of 5 over 5, and instead of dividing by this fraction, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. And the 5's cancel, and the square root of 5's cancel, and I'm left with an invisible 1 on top and a 2 on bottom. Same answer. Okay, so we can check our work. The second problem is a solving problem. And there's not a ton of solving problems for this particular set of identities because the long way to solve this is one that you've actually been using for a while now. Um, it's just peeling the layers. So, I mean, you could square both sides and then you could deal with the one half in front of the parentheses and then you could deal with the one inside the parentheses and then you could do inverse cosine and, and you could do the whole nine yards but number one that's going to be more steps than what I show you and number two right here as soon as you square an equation to solve it you generate extraneous answers and that means you'd have to check every answer that you got which is then more work so what we're going to do instead is we're going to match this. This left side of the equation matches an identity. It's the same thing as 1 plus cosine of x over 2. And so 1 plus cosine of x over 2 is the same thing as cosine of half of x. And now, to solve it, it's just two steps. It's just inverse cosine and then get rid of the one-half, and I'm not squaring it to generate any answers. Okay, so I'm going to just do inverse cosine of both sides. Get rid of the cosine over here and have just one-half x. And then I, of course, need to evaluate inverse cosine of one-half. As usual, we recommend that you, until you have enough practice with these, just write these as general solutions. Also because this one half is going to alter the number of answers we get. So inverse cosine of one half, and you notice our domains and radians, so I'm going to go ahead and answer in radians. Um, 
is pi thirds plus or minus 2 pi n and negative pi thirds plus or minus 2 pi n. Those are the two places where cosine is 1 half. Okay, but then my last step is to get rid of the 1 half in front of the x. So I need to take the whole thing and I need to double it. And so that'll get the x by itself. I double the pi thirds and I get 2 pi thirds plus or minus and then I double the 2 pi n and I get 4 pi n. That's not a fraction bar by the way, that's just where I'm separating my answers. And then I distribute here and I get negative 2 pi thirds plus or minus and then I distribute there and I also get 4 pi n. And so now I can use those general solutions to generate my list of answers. So my first answer is of course the 2 pi thirds. And I can't add 4 pi to it because then I'm outside my domain. So that's the only answer I get from that general solution. And then I can't list negative 2 pi thirds because it's, once again, it's outside my domain. But I can start there and I can add 4 pi to it one time and I can get 10 pi thirds. So there's my two answers. And one comment that I'm not sure if everybody's noticed or paid attention to, but remember that the number in front of the x inside your trig function will tell you how many times as many answers as you would normally expect? Well, for inverse cosine of 1 half, between 0 and 4 pi, we would normally have expected four answers. And this 1 half, sure enough, chopped that number of answers in half. We only had two answers down here. Okay, so that is something we can predict. And then the final problem is that unit circle problem I told you about. So if it helps, remember your answer is not an angle. So <clears throat> if you want to rewrite this angle in degrees, you can. Um, and I'll do that in just a second. I actually think that it's easier to leave it in radians because look at this denominator you can figure out what angle is it that got chopped in half be to become 5 pi eighths because the only thing that would have happened is the denominator would have gotten doubled. And so that means that the angle that got chopped in half was 5 pi fourths because when these two multiply together then you would have had a 5 pi on top and you would have had the 8 on bottom. So you can, I think it's easier to actually notice or calculate what your half angle is um, when it's in radians. But that's, once again, that's up to you. Some people don't work very well in radians, so when you have the option, feel free to change it. So 5 pi eighths, if you convert it to degrees, is 112.5 degrees. And so obviously that is a half angle, because there's no way you're going to get a 0.5 otherwise. And so you would have to figure out, oh, hey, this is half of 225 degrees which of course is what 5 pi fourths is. So either way you're getting the same setup, it's just what unit are you setting your angle up in. Okay, and so then what you do is we write down the identity. The identity is plus or minus big square root 1 plus cosine of and remember that we are, once we are done choosing this plus or minus out in front of here, it's the only thing we use the half angle for. Inside of the actual identity, we can't plug in the half angle. We have to plug in the original angle, the A. So in whichever unit you want to do it in. So since most people do think in degrees, I'll go ahead and write it in degrees. It's 225 degrees over 2. Okay. Now, if you think about it, if you're having trouble remembering what angle goes inside, Think about it this way. If I plugged the 112.5 degrees in there, I'd be just as stuck as I was before the identity, which makes no sense. The whole point of the identity is to be able to evaluate the angle that I couldn't have evaluated otherwise. So if I plug 112.5 in there, I can't calculate cosine of 112.5 so that the entire identity would have not made any sense. 
So the only thing I use the half angle for, the only thing I use this 112.5 for, is to figure out if I'm going to do this plus or minus outside of here. And 112.5 is in which quadrant? Yep, it's in quadrant 2. And so that means I'm going to choose the negative. Because cosine in quadrant 2 is a negative number. And now I can begin evaluating. So I'm going to have my, rat my negative in front of my radical. Big radical. 1 plus. Now I evaluate cosine of 225 degrees, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. And it's all over 2. And now I just need to begin simplifying. And before people panic too much, we, I mean, number one, we know these are messy. But number two, these answers are messy enough that there's really not much you could do to simplify it very far. We're just going to write this as 2 over 2. So we have my negative, my big radical. My numerator becomes 2 minus the square root of 2 over 2. But then don't forget, we're still dividing by this 2 here. And this is where it really does come in handy to rewrite it the way I did in the previous problem. This dividing by 2 right here is the same thing, and so I'm going to rewrite it as multiplying by 1 half. Because then it's obvious that these two 2's are both part of the denominator. And so what I have is I have 2 minus the square root of 2 on top, and then these two 2's down here give me a 4 on bottom. But then our last step is to actually take the square root of the fraction. Now when I square root the numerator, there's nothing I can do. It is just the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2. Can't be simplified, nothing to do with it. But the square root of 4 is 2. And that's actually the most important part, is that our answer doesn't have a radical in the denominator anymore. So we don't have to worry about simplifying it anymore, or rationalizing it, or anything hideous like that. Okay, so I know these were a little longer than I would have liked, or a little longer than normal, but they are the last set of identities for this unit, and this does allow us time to do nothing but practice this new bunch of identities in class tomorrow. So see you guys tomorrow.